Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about Think Like a Manager part 3. In this session, we're also going to discuss about some one-liner question which map with the Think Like a Manager for your IC Square exam. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first coffee shot. Which of the following provide the foundation for an organization comprehensive and effective information security program? It means they're talking about out of following which can be provide the foundation for the program. Now, if you go by the organization culture, how it works is the first we have a vision of an organization. Just give me a second. First, we have a vision of an organization. Based on the vision, we have a mission. Based on the mission, we basically create a strategy. Now, this strategy is basically include first part, which is called information security policy. Based on the information security policy, we create an information security program. So you can say like that policy is a governance. And the question talking about which of the following provide the foundation for an organization comprehensive, effective information security program. Roles and responsibility, okay, roles and responsibilities of everything is required because by this way we can able to get the RACI matrix. Security policy, that is the most important thing. You can say like that security policy is a law of an organization. Any kind of a system you want to introduce in the organization, it should be backed and supported by the policy. I can give an example. In change management, the service need to be closed or ticket need to be closed in two days. But what is a parameter based on which you decided this? So it is captured in the policy. Information is very important that must be protected with the utmost priority. Who said this? Management. Where it is mentioned? Policy. So without policy, things are working ineffective. So security policy for me is the best option. Third is called a security procedure. As I said, the question talking about foundation, it means initial step. Without policy procedure is ineffective. Risk management is a driving factor for any kind of an activity, but that is a foundation for effective security program, which is not true. So without policy, when to conduct, how to conduct is no point, and why to conduct risk assessment does not make sense. So the most important thing, the first what is required is the policy. Policy is the foundation for the effective governance. Always remember, first we need a policy. Based on a policy, we build the program. And based on a program, we introduce the operation procedure. Because policy talk about why we need that. Policy is the intent of an organization. Policy is the governance of an organization. That's why the answer is A for alpha. And it also talk about the roles and responsibility. Let's move to the next coffee shot. It's a good question. You are a security consultant of an organization. Fine. You just concluded risk assessment of an organization. It means we just completed the risk assessment. And your focus primary based on the quantitative, where we're talking about monetary assessment. Which result can be used to justify your security expenditure? It means the cost, controls, and everything. Option A, ALE, makes sense because ALE is basically formed through SLE and ARO, annual loss expectancy. Second is called as a single loss expectancy, which is basically cost me from a single event. ARO, which is talk about the occurrence of the rate. It means how many times it occurs. And exposure factor is a percentage. See, if you go by the formula of SLE, SLE formula is ALE into, sorry, SLE formula is uh, asset value into exposure factor. So if I take an example, there is a virus which basically going to target a server. Okay. One activity will not have much impact actually. One activity will not have much impact. But it's still I need to calculate, I need to understand if virus attack one time a server, what is the impact? So as a value, suppose we take $10,000 and exposure factor, suppose I take 80%. So it is coming around $8,000. It means one activity cost me $8,000. I decided to go with the antivirus which cost me $12,000. But problem is that investing $12,000 for $8,000 risk does not make sense. That is why we take an action based on the annual rate of occurrence. So ALE we have equal to, sorry, based on the annual loss expectancy. So ARO into SLE. So virus attack basically four times in a year and SLE for in single event cost me $8,000. So 
so overall basically cost me thirty two thousand dollar so yes it makes sense now so ALE is known it can be used by the information security management to determine the cost effective risk mitigation strategy that is why based on the ALE only I will take a call that's why the answer is A for alpha let's move to the next coffee shot very good question which of the following factor must be considered when establishing a classification of assets must is something mandatory which cannot be skipped business definitely most important factor stakeholder also employee also regulatory requirement but out of following which cannot be avoid which cannot be skip so we need to select that option which is supersede everything we need to select that option which is rigid we need to select that option which cannot be ignored business can be customized according to that we can classify the objects stakeholders we can convince them to changes on the requirement employee can be done but regulatory requirement is something come, coming from a government which cannot be ignored okay so that must be considered when you classifying the information that's why the answer is d for delta okay example like i'm 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 into the health sector and all that and for me phi data is very important i need to be comply with the hipaa and other regulations so according to that i need to classify so that something cannot be skipped so regulatory requirement is something which cannot be ignored okay let's move to the next coffee shot okay which of the following is most important for the effective implementation of information categorization process i repeat again which of the following is the most which cannot be skip important for the effective implementation of information categorization process option a data classification policy definitely data classification policy without that we cannot drive the classification system cost benefit analysis definitely it come into the picture when we implementing any control risk management is a driving factor by which we identify gaps and d is senior management support see we can adopt this we can adopt this and we can adopt this but if there's no support from the management there's a possibility even you can't able to implement this in the organization so senior management support is very important without that support you can't build the policy even you did the cost benefit analysis there is no there's no approval from the management then there's no point of implementing the control risk management identify the risk but by end of the day, management is the one who accept the risk so most effective implementation come from the management support like management convey the things management approve the policies if tomorrow any employee will say something we can tell them okay it is an order from the management so without senior management support we can't implement anything that's why the answer is d for delta let's move to the next coffee shot okay your company concluded that they would go for a ida solution which is called as a intrusion detection solution for an organization but before buying an ida solution which of the following factor must be considered again we are in a process of shortlisting a solution so as a consultant see i am not a technical person i am a consultant i suggested ideas to be used but question is how to shortlist the ideas the first option is purpose for which it is intended makes sense i'm going for the packet filtering firewall and this firewall has met all this feature it meet my requirement i will implement ability to scale up to high volume traffic it is something is a hypothetical scenario it happens then we need to check but that should not be the first parameter might be i am planning to buy ideas from a small scale network scope of attack signature it is one of the feature of solution okay that is required i'm not saying not required but we only rely only on attack signature function we have a behavior base we have a rule base so only based on attack signature one disadvantage with attack signature is that if your solution is not up to date with the new attack signature the ideas will not able to detect feedback and improvement that is something comes after implementation or during a solution you're taking a feedback from the people it is okay but based on the feedback only based on the improvement only buying the solution does not make sense so the first important thing is called as a purpose i will go for any ideas but make sure that purpose should be clear and it should be aligned with my business requirement okay that's what the answer is a because if i'm buying ideas we know some uh, solutions which has those feature and it met my requirement that is what the my purpose has been achieved so that's why i'm going to implement that solution that's why the answer is a for alpha okay let's move to the next coffee shot okay to improve control effectiveness in the enterprise which report will you trust most option a internal audit report again it is done by internal employee 
for the directors still i can trust that because they directly report to the board so definitely they are not under the peer pressure option b audit report conducted by the reputed firm it doesn't matter might be the reputed firm can do the fraud also option c audit report is given by the core auditor of an organization again there is a possibility of favoritism no matter he they are the great auditors in the place and option d audit report is given by the independent auditors now here the confusion is between a and d if you see internal audit report again it's an employee but audit report driven by independent auditor it can be anyone it can be employee it can be external so d basically make better statement that's why i will go with the d as answer because by end of the day the report the audit should be fully independent you should not work under any pressure and all that no matter it's a internal employee or external employee so that is a most important principle we need to follow so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find this coffee shots and uh, do share me your feedbacks which book you are referring for cssp ccsp in the comment box okay i will plan more session like that and if you new to the channel do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic good day bye